Why is the saying the house always wins true? Some card games definitely seem fairer than others, so how does the casino end up making money? What's the math behind all this? Let's talk about roulette, especially the ones with the double zeros. It makes sense that the higher risk bets, like betting on a single number, has a higher payout of 35 to 1, whereas the lower risk ones, like black or red, just the colors, has a lower payout of 1 to 1. So is there a way to find out what option is better in the long run? Well, it turns out there is. In math, we use something called the expected value. That's kind of like the weighted average or the average in the long run. So if you keep betting a certain way, how much money will you gain or lose on average per bet? So for example, say we only bet a dollar on a single number. If we win, we get $35, and the probability of that is 1 in 38. Now if we lose, we only lose a dollar, but the probability is a lot higher now, it's 37 out of 38. So the expected winnings per bet is the weighted total. It's what you will win times the probability of winning, plus what you will lose times the probability of losing. It turns out to be minus 2 out of 38, which is minus 0.05. So in the long run, we expect to lose on average 5 cents per bet. Let's take a look at a color bet. Let's say we bet a dollar on red every single time. If we win, we get a dollar, and the probability for this is 18 out of 38, a little less than 50%. Now if we lose, we also lose a dollar, but this time the probability is 20 out of 38, a little more than 50%. So in the end, the expected winnings is, again, the weighted total. So in fact, we expect to lose the same amount on average per bet in the long run. We expect to lose on average 5 cents per bet. So there are a lot of different strategies out there. Let's take a look at a really simple one that only involves betting black or red. So how this works is we start by betting $1. The probability of us losing is 20 out of 38, a little bit more than 50%. Now if we win, great, we keep it in a little pile and bet another dollar the next time. Now if we lose, we move up the ladder and double our bet to $2. The probability of us losing this time is 20 out of 38 times 20 out of 38, which is 27.7%. It's a lot lower because it's harder to win twice in a row. If we win this time, a dollar will be used to cover our previous losses, and we will still pocket a dollar and restart our bet from the bottom of the ladder at $1. Now if we lose a second time, we move up the ladder again and double our bet to $4. The probability of losing this time is even lower at about 14.6% because it's a lot harder to lose three times in a row. Again, if we win, three dollars will be used to cover our previous losses and we'll pocket a dollar and restart our bet at one dollar. So say you lose again, we move up the ladder and double every time. It doesn't take long for the probability of losing to get really small. In fact, at our eighth losing streak, the probability of that is less than one percent. So it's highly likely that we would have already won by then before we hit our $128 bet. Even though it seems like we have a solid system here, we're actually only winning a dollar at a time. And there's a lot of flaws with this system. Casinos usually have a minimum bet that's higher than one dollar, and they usually implement a maximum bet. So if we start at a higher minimum bet, we'll likely reach the maximum bet before the probability of losing gets low enough. Some people strategically change the bet amounts, so instead of doubling each bet, they can use different strategies, so that even though each win may not cover all the previous losses, they increase the chance of making money in the long run. But all these strategies are probability dependent and can get you in trouble with the casino, so not really worth it in the long run. So that's all the math behind why the house always wins.